Hi there everyone and welcome to TipPad where we're bringing you the ZBrush course by 3D artist Didac Soto. On the course we'll be showing you how to create a medieval style suit of armour in ZBrush. And this course is for those who already have some experience using the programme, so I'll be showing you how to create this particular object, the armour, using the tools and functions of the software that you're already familiar with. So to begin with, we're going to load a much more personalised interface than the one we have by default. And this way everything will be much more adjusted to this specific task. This is the interface that I use for professional projects, so I'm sure you'll be fine with it. And to do this, we go to Preference. Then we'll select Configure. And load UI. And then we can load our interface. I'll attach this interface in the attachments section of the course so that you can do this too. So don't forget to save this file and then you can open it up where you saved it and then hit open. A window will appear to tell you that you need to restart the program. So exit the program and when it opens up again you should have the interface loaded. And with this done we can get started. So first things first, we'll go to the light box and we'll select one of the human models, like this one. And this will be our base on which we can work to create our suit of armour. You can also remove the parts that you won't need. OK, delete. The first step is to increase the number of polygons on the model. So we'll increase the subdivision to 4 or 5, for example. The more subdivisions you have, the clearer the mask will be. At this point, it's important that you use references of other images and designs to get a good idea of how to create your suit of armour. You could use Pinterest, which is a great tool for this kind of thing. Once you have enough images, you can start working. So here you could mark the area of the shoulder pads with the mask. With symmetry activated, X on the keyboard, we can make quite an interesting shape here. You can be a bit more creative if you like, and you don't have to do exactly the same as me. While holding down Ctrl, you can paint a mask on the object with the brush. So select Mask Lasso, making the selection easier. And with Ctrl and click and dragging the mouse, you can remove the mask. When you have the shape of the shoulder pads, go to Subtool and then Extract. In this panel, you can decide how to extract your masked selection. So you could click here to soften, and here for the size of the extrusion. And remember that if you hold down Ctrl on each key, you get a description of what they do, like this. So right now we can work with the default properties, that's fine. Although with the thick option, 
we can determine the thickness of the extrusion. So hit extrude and let's see the result. If you move the camera, it disappears because this is only a preview. And you need to click on accept to generate the subtool. If you now go to the list of subtools, you'll see that the shoulder pads have been loaded as a separate object. So remove the mask, click and control, move the mouse. And remember that in Dynamic Solo, you can choose that only the selected subtool is visible. At this point, we need to eliminate the polygroups. So let's select the option to show the polygroups. And we need to end up with only a layer of the model. So Control Shift Alt, eliminate the excess parts. To see everything better, we could activate the double option, which is right here. Control Shift Alt and remove those parts. We'll end up with something like this. If you wanted to change the distribution of the polygroups, then you could go to the panel and select, for instance, here, that you want the selection to be group by normal. And then you'll get something different. Or you could just try out the different options and see what they do. So for example, group visible. Okay, and when you have the shape, eliminate the excess polygons by clicking on Hidden. The next step is to go to Z Remesh and with Symmetry activated, X on your keyboard. We'll lower the count quite a lot. We want to end up with fewer polygons. So select Z Remesh and see the result. With half activated, lower to around half and redistribute the mesh. Okay. So go to polygroup and select visible group to even it out into one polygroup. Now go to geometry, edge loop, panel loops, and this is where we're going to add volume to the different areas. If you select panel loops, well, you'll see that you gain volume and the edges preserve the loops and they're part of another polygroup. The loops determine the number of segments the edges have and the polish, well, this determines the level of softening that we get for the model in general. The less polish we have, the more we maintain the original shape and the thickness indicates how wide or how thick we want it to be. We can leave the rest of the options as they are. So we'll put one loop, zero point zero one thickness, two to three for polish, and create the shape. So the idea now is to follow the same procedure to make the rest of the pieces that make up the suit of armour. And we'll leave it there for now, and I'll see you in the next lesson.